Boat Marine held a symposium on land-sea interactions this week. The two-day meeting discussed, among other things, the issue of climate change. SNN Local News 6 reporter Charles Brown was there, and he joins us live in our newsroom now with more on what was said. Charles. Well, as outlined in a new state report, Lauren, the oceans are changing because of greenhouse gases, increased air temperature and water vapor, increasing ocean temperatures, and last but not least, an increasing sea level. Sea level rise is the point of departure, but it's getting in, us into areas and some very uh, constructive discussions with uh, private sector, uh, environmental sector, and public sector officials on issues of growth management and, and land use planning. Research indicates that sea level water temperatures have risen by an average of 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit between the 1950s and the 1990s. The research also indicates that the world's oceans are becoming more acidic. What we need to focus on in terms of policy tools and processes are things that are already in place but cut across issues like land use planning and growth management, again, which can be very contentious sometimes. These environmental trends are something that affect not only the marine environment, indeed environmental change goes beyond the scientific. In time, it could undermine the way we live, not to mention the economic damage that could result if steps aren't taken to reverse what could become an irreversible trend. Basically, the idea is to get an early start on um, planning for these things so that we have, you know, a heads up and an advantage when sea levels do start to come closer to our doorsteps. Officials at Moat Marine say climate change seems unavoidable unless action can be taken to avoid this environmental nightmare. We've been aware, again, of the fragility of, uh, of our coastal zone, but sea level rise has been something that, in a way, I think we might have had our head in the sand. Uh, people don't talk about it, or at least they're not planning, I think, for it in the manner that they should be. And researchers also say that with further rises in water atmos in atmospheric temperatures, Florida's 1,200 miles of coastline could be more vulnerable to exotic species of plants and animals both. Lauren? All right, Charles Brown reporting for us on that. Thanks, Charles.